in this video, the first thing I want to go over is the process that I'm going to be using to uh, you know, create these models, UV map them, and then texture them. It's going to be three separate videos. We're going to have the model and video, and the second video is going to be on UV mapping, and then the third, of course, will be on texture. And so three videos per every model that I create. All right. And this is what I am going to be working on. This is an air conditioner's remote. And it's a pretty simple model. I figured this would be pretty good for our first model and video. So I'm just going to get started. And if you look at this image here, this is 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. What that basically is going to do is it's going to allow me to create a plane, throw this texture on there, and there's going to be no type of distortion. So that's how I'm going to deal with my reference plane. Um, I'm pretty sure that you can do the exact same thing in most software, so that's sort of a universal way to get uh, reference planes set up. Alright, so I'm just going to get started here. I'm going to create a plane, and I'm going to turn down the subdivisions to just one. No reason to have any additional geometry if it's not required. I'm going to scale it up a little bit. Not that it matters. It could be any scale that you would like. Okay. So I'm just going to open up the Hypershade. It's under Window, Editing, or Render and Editors, Hypershade. You open that up. Here it is. And I'm going to take out a Lambert, rename it, call it Reference M, M for Material. Then I am going to find that image that I wanted to use. That was 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. Throw it in here. And plug it into the color of my reference material and then just throw it on there and then now if you press 6 which is for textured view you would see the remote on there alright so I'm just gonna get started modeling I'm gonna create a cube here and I'm gonna go in, in the top view and I'm going to grab some vertices and just make sure that the cube pretty much fills in the dimensions of the remote Alright, I'm just going to move some more of them over to the left side. And now what I'm going to do is insert an edge loop cut. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and go look for Insert Edge Loop Cut Tool, or Insert Edge Loop Tool. And we're just going to put this anywhere on it like that. The goal is going to be, if you see this darkened line on the grid. That's the center of the grid, basically. And if I just select this edge loop here, and I hold X down, that's going to allow me to snap it to the grid like that. Okay, so I'm just going to delete the faces on one side like that because anytime you're modeling something you want to only have to model half of the model so it just makes things easier so you have to do pretty much half of the work now I'm going to go up to edit duplicates with special and I'm going to open up this box here and with geometry type I'm going to choose instance and we're going to mirror it along the negative x-axis. So basically if you're in Blender, it's your mirror modifier. So hit, hit apply, and now it's mirrored. Alright, so now I'm just going to make some changes to the model. I'm going to actually move this uh, reference plane into a layer. So I'm going to go create a new layer and assign selected objects and press that button there. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it reference layer underscore layer choose a color if you want and I'm just going to turn that to reference or make it invisible. I'm going to make it invisible for now and I'm going to go down to where it says show and choose grid. That's going to hide the grid and I'm just going to drag this face up to right there I think. Take a look at our reference image here. We've got uh, Let's see. We've got a better picture here. Yeah, okay. So we've got this area here. Um, 
which looks about that high in height or thickness, whatever you want to call it. So, after that, we have... Let's see... Of course, these corners are beveled. That's actually what I'm going to work on right now, is bevel on those corners. So I'm going to select all four corners here, or two corners, because it mirrored selected the other two. So I'm going to go to where it says Edit Mesh, go down to Bevel, and under my Attribute Editor over here, I'm going to lower this offset to like 0 0.2. Maybe 0.15 would do the trick. And then change the segments to 3 or 4. I'm going to go with 4 segments on that. And then I'm going to remove this edge here from both sides. Okay, I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to save this as remote.mb, replace that file. Okay, so now what I need to do is select this bottom face here. Actually, I need to get rid of the edges on the other side of it. That's what I forgot to do. So I'm going to delete those edges and then select this bottom face. And if we take a look at our reference image, we got this sort of an angle, I believe, coming off of this uh, flat surface here. So we get this sort of an angle. And I'm just going to hit the extrude tool and it's not a very high um, between the start of where the angle begins and where it ends it's not very high the height of it so I'm just going to bring that about to there uh, then I'm going to scale it in like that. I think I need to bring this up a little like that. Okay. That's probably probably a little too much actually. So I'm just going to scale it a little bit back there to about there I think. Or right there maybe. Let's see, I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. Let's see, okay. That looks good. So now I'm going to select this face here and just delete it. And then grab this vertice. I'm going to turn on uh, wireframe shaded view. And I'm going to grab this vertice, just merge it along the center there on both ends. I'm going to take a look at my reference image again here. And I'm going to, for this next part here, you see that there's a little bit of an angle there on this face here. So, somewhat of an angle, but it's actually pretty tall. I'd say it's about three times higher than this face here. So, we've got a small angle and three times the height. So I'm just going to grab this face, and I'm going to hit the Extrude tool, and let's see, and it's pretty, pretty, pretty high. Um, let's see, probably about there, maybe, maybe a little bit more, and it is an angle, so I'm going to scale it in in both the X and Y axes. Take a look at it from the top view, make sure I've got this scaled, uh, well, the bottom view actually. I need to look at the bottom view. Turn off that grid again, and adjust my, oops, adjust the scale a little bit here. I think that's about right. So, back to perspective view. I'm going to delete these two internal faces here, 
and I'm just going to take this edge and merge it along the center of the grid right there okay now what I need to do is on this two, these two faces here I need to have a bevel as you can see this corner here actually has a bevel so there's bevel, bevel, and a bevel so I'm going to select this face here and I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and we're going to choose Bevel. Let's take a look at just how much of a bevel there is there. Okay, it's pretty smooth and it's not very, uh, the offset isn't very big on that, so I'm going to adjust it here. Try to eyeball it again and change the segments. Three should do the trick. Okay. That I think looks pretty decent. I'm going to save my scene again. I hit Control S so I can just go up to Save Scene. And on the top here, if we take a look at the reference image, there is this slight, uh, like, crack here. Or crevice. And I'm not going to try to do that with uh, with texturing, which, I mean, I could do it with texturing. I just feel like it's going to kind of be hard because I'm going to be using an image like this for the texturing, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it so easily without a lot of manipulation. So what I'm going to do is just go into a top view here and to create that um, little line or crack, that crevice, I'm going to hit extrude and I'm going to scale that extrusion just a little bit. Just a little, little, little bit. So it's not very much at all. I think right about there. Uh, then I'm going to hit extrude again. And I'm going to scale just a little bit again on both the X and Y axes. I'm going to go back to the perspective view here. And I should be able to do another extrusion from these faces, but first I'm going to go to the center here and I'm going to clean up this. I'm going to delete these faces and then I'm going to merge this or snap it to the center there on either end like this. So I'm just holding down V to snap that vertice to some of the other vertices that are aligned to the center. Okay. Now I'm just going to select this outer or innermost faces and I'm going to hit the extrude button and extrude this just a little bit down. And now if I turn off the uh, wireframe unshaded shouldn't look too bad. Um, I should probably I should probably add a bevel now that I think about it. So I'm going to select these edges here on the inside and well I actually need to clean up this face here. I'm going to delete that, go back on the other end delete that face as you can see right in there and then I'm just going to begin selecting some of these edges go over to the other side select this edge these edges 
Okay, now I'm going to do a bevel here. So again, I'm going to go up to Edit Mesh, choose Bevel, and I'm going to change this offset to about point 0.2, should do the trick. Um, or we could go point 0.1, I'm going to go with point 0.2, so yeah, point 0.2, and then I'm going to select these outermost edges, and I'm going to get them all selected, it takes a while to select edges. I've had a little bit of trouble selecting those edges. I'm going to go over to here and make sure I got all of these edges selected. Okay, this is probably really hard to see, but I'm just trying to bevel these edges. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, Bevel, and again we're going to go with that point two offset. And now that looks a little bit better. So now I just want to actually select the mesh here. So I'm going to select our model and I'm going to go up to normals and I'm going to go soften edge. And that's just going to make the geometry look a little bit softer. Alright, um, now I'm going to take a look at the reference images here. If you see this area where, um, let me see if I can flip this where it says all oh, this, this is a, this unit contains internal magnet, whatever. Okay, there's a slight indentation to that area of where that sticker is. So, if I go into a back, a bottom view here, um, I want to overemphasize that indentation there. So, I'm going to select the model here, this uh, back face here, which is basically this face. And I'm going to put a loop cut here, a loop cut here, a loop cut there, and a loop cut there. So I've got to try to do that the best I can. So I'm going to make that reference image visible here. And let's see. Okay, this is going to be yeah, I can't do it that way. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have to take a guess. So I'm going to go up to Edit Mesh, and then Insert Edge Loop Tool. Let's see, do I have another picture here? Let's see, what's the best picture of that that I have? Okay. So, I'm going to look at the distance between the end of the sticker to that corner and how far that is, and then try to gauge my first slice off of that. Okay. I'm actually going to go use the, um, what tool is it? Where is it here? It's uh interactive split tool, okay? No, it's not. It's cut faces tool. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a cut faces tool. I haven't used mine in a while. Um, so it's going to be about, let's see, a little bit more distance there, a little bit less actually, I think, between there and there, um, right there, that's, that's what I'm going to go with, it's a cut right there, uh, then, I need to give it about enough length for that sticker. So, I'll probably go with right there, just eyeballing it, and then I'm going to cut down this side here. Oops. Why isn't that cutting? Let's see. I'm going to go edit, and I'm going to go delete by type history. Okay, then I'm going to select that tool again under Edit Mesh, the Cut Faces tool, and I'm going to try to get that cut about right there, 
and this is well if we look at it I need to grab these vertices and pull them in a little bit like that and I think that that is probably a lot closer to what we're looking for so I'm just going to extrude this down a little bit about to there and delete this face that was in the center there okay now I'm going to select these top uh, edges and the bottom edges or maybe not the bottom edges just the top edges there around well okay I gotta think about this for a second I'm gonna select this edge this edge this edge but also that edge right there these two edges in the corners but then I'm gonna go up to edit mesh and we're gonna choose bevel yeah yeah, you definitely need that edge in the corner if you're going to get the right look. And I think I only need one segment for this. And the offset, I'm going to make it 0.7. And now what I could actually do is I could just grab these vertices here. And if I still am not happy with how this looks compared to the reference picture, I can just move those vertices and it's not going to actually hurt my model in any way that would would screw it up okay so that's probably good now I'm going to just go back and select the mesh and then go soften edges now I want to make a few more uh, minor adjustments to it I'm gonna go into side view here and I think I actually messed up when it comes to uh, this f these faces here they're a little bit too high they need to be quite a bit uh, less tall so I'm gonna select this group of vertices here and well no I'll select the top these top vertices and uh, then I'll just pull them down to about let's see here right there I think is good go into a perspective view here see if I messed anything up okay that looks good actually you know what I think I screwed up again they need to be slightly very slightly thicker I made it too thin so it's a lot of tweaking just going back making sure things look right so I'm gonna make this just a little bit more like that and I think that's just about right alright so the last thing that I'm gonna do is just select these two objects here and then I'm going to use the combine tool and that's just gonna combine it and then I could go up to edit mesh merge and press this little square here and then the threshold is going to need to be really low because you don't want to accidentally merge any of uh, these vertices that are really close together so these are about the closest together vertices and none of them got merged so I set it just low enough so that vertices that were stacked on top of each other would get merged okay so that's pretty much it for the modeling of this remote and in the next video I'm going to be UV mapping it so we can actually start texturing it in the third video so thanks for watching